morning. How are you doing? Um, welcome, everybody. Thanks for coming out. And uh, we'll start with the pledge. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance. Remain standing, we'll say a prayer. Grace, Heavenly Father, we come to you today, and thanks for all your many blessings. We do thank you for this time that you set aside for us to work together, Lord, for the betterment of the people of the state of Mississippi. Pray that you would give us wisdom and guidance as we seek to do that. Pray that you would open doors you'd have us go and close them where you would. Pray that you would give us, again, wisdom and guidance as we seek to serve the people of the state. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So now we're going to move to the agenda. We'll go to um, uh, cons start with the consent docket agenda. Um, we'll start with the consent docket item one. It's an adoption of proposed consent docket for the March 20, 2024 meeting of the commission. Do I have a motion? So move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. I uh, will move now on to energy. Um, with energy, that's electric natural gas, we'll recognize Mr. Lee to uh, present item one, a, UA, a 2023 UA 131. Good morning. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioners, good morning. Uh, first up is this joint petition of Cooperative Energy and Magnolia Electric Power Association order granting a certificate of public convenience and necessity. This joint petition filed by Cooperative and Magnolia EPA requests an order approving a project that would construct transmission, distribution, switching, and substation facilities. This is in Franklin, Lincoln, Pike, and Amit counties. Um, this project would increase reliability, improve quality of service, and allow Cooperative and Magnolia EPA to continue to adequately serve members in this area. The staff has presented the commission with a summary of the filing and our review, and we agree that these additional facilities are necessary and that the costs associated therewith are reasonable, so staff recommends approval. Thank you. Gentlemen, you heard his... Uh, um Explanation, do you have any questions? No questions, I'd uh, ask for a motion. So moved. Any second? Second. All, of, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Uh, again, Mr. Lee, you're recognized to present item two, 2023 UA 147. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioners, this is a very similar petition. This is joint between Cooperative Energy and Pearl River Valley EPA, another order granting certificate of public convenience and necessity. This joint petition filed by Cooperative and Pearl River Valley EPA requests approval for a project that will construct transmission, switching, and substation facilities that will increase reliability, improve quality of service, and allow Cooperative and Pearl River Valley to continue to adequately serve members in Hattiesburg and Forest County. Staff has presented the commission with a summary of the filing and staff's review. Staff agrees that these additional facilities are necessary and that the costs associated therewith are reasonable, and staff recommends approval. Any questions? No. Have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Any questions? Oh, excuse me. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Um, move on to item three. Uh, Mr. Lee, you're recognized to present item three, 2023 UA 156. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioners, this is a petition by Entergy Mississippi LLC for an order granting a certificate of public convenience and necessity. This petition requests approval for a project that would construct transmission, switching, and substation facilities in Smith and Simpson counties. Uh, this project will increase reliability, improve quality of service, and allow Entergy to continue to adequately serve customers in these counties. As an isolated input to a rate impact, 
approval of this project would represent a 14% increase to an average 1,000 kilowatt monthly residential customer bill. However, spending for this project was contemplated in energy's transmission and distribution plan, so its actual rate impact, if any, is yet to be determined. Staff has presented the commission with a summary of the filing and staff's review. Staff agrees these additional facilities are necessary and that the costs associated therewith are reasonable, and we recommend approval. Thank you, Ms. Lee. Um, any questions? Do I have a motion? So moved. A second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Move on to item four. Um, Docket number 2024 UA1. Um, recognize, Mr. Lee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioners, this last energy agenda item um, is a petition, again, joint with Cooperative Energy and this time Coastal Electric Power Association uh, seeking an order granting a certificate of public convenience and necessity. This joint petition filed by Cooperative and Coastal requests approval for a project that would construct transmission, switching, and substation facilities. The project would increase reliability, improve quality of service, and allow Cooperative and Pearl River Valley EPA to continue to adequately serve members in Harrison County. Staff has presented the commission with a summary of the filing and staff's review, and we agree these additional facilities are necessary and that the costs associated with it are reasonable and we recommend approval. I've heard the explanation. Any questions? Do you have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Lee, for your presentation and your hard work on this. Um, we'll move on to uh, telecommunications agenda. Uh, Mr. Jones, you're recognized to present item 1, 2023 UA 157. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioners, uh, this is a joint application for approval to transfer Paytel Communications, Inc. Paytel is an inmate telephone service provider with a CPC in here in Mississippi to provide those services uh, to transfer it, uh, the company to Paytel Communications ESOP Trust. Uh, that is a employment uh, retirement program for the employees. They will uh, exercise ownership over the main company. Domestic 214 application for this transfer was approved by the FCC back on November the 5th, 2023, and the staff would recommend approval of the transfer. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, any questions? Motion? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Any opposed? Motion carries. Um, move on to item two. Um, Mr. Jones, you're recognized to present 2023 UA163. Thank you, sir. Uh, Vero Fiber Networks is seeking the CPCN to provide uh, telecommunication services, local exchange and inter-exchange telecom services throughout the state. Um, they're a fiber network company. Um, they possess the necessary financial, technical, and managerial ability to provide the service for which they seek in the uh, CPCN. Based on their application and responses to staff's data request, uh, they appear to meet all the criteria for the grants. We would recommend uh, the grant of a CPCN to this company. Okay, thank you for your presentation. Any questions? So moved. I have a motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Move on to item uh, agenda item number three. Um, Mr. Jones, you're recognized to present Docket number 2024, UA5. Commissioners, MCI Metro Access Transmission, also uh, doing business as Verizon Access Transmission Services, has filed a petition for a partial discontinuance of services here in the state in certain areas. They have some remaining customers uh, as of 2019. They're seeking to discontinue basic local exchange services to residential and small business customers. Uh, they're still going to offer standalone inter-exchange or short, long-distance services. Uh, they're approximately, as of Friday, March the 1st, 102 remaining customers. Uh, appropriate notice has been sent out under Rule 23 of our rules. 
uh, for discontinuance. It's, they've been receiving notices from the company explaining to them how they migrate, um, that their number can be ported, and they request been requesting the services to be discontinued um, since August 2023. The FCC has approved the discontinuance. They approved that in docket number 23-332 um, on December 31st, 2023. Uh, we would recommend approval of their motion and petition to discontinue these basic services. There is another service provider in the area, AT&T, the incumbent, um, should the customers want to migrate to AT&T landline service. Any questions? Motion? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, we'll move on to item. Um, you have another item, Mr. Jones? No, sir, that's all. Okay. Thank you, Thank you sir. Move on to uh, water and sewer agenda. Um, docket number 2023 UN 132. And uh, recognize Mr. Brewer to handle that item. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. Uh, yes, uh, North Texas Mingo request approval. <laughs> of initial rates, monthly rates for sewer service of $32. It's, it's, uh, staff recommends approval. Okay. Any questions? I have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Um, we'll move on to um, the... Thank you, Mr. Jones. Appreciate that. Um, we'll move on now to the administrative agenda. Um, item number one is a discussion of possible action regarding approval of commission minutes for the for the 2024 term. Um, 2024 term of the commission. Are there any questions? A motion. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Um, we'll move on to um, item number two on the administrative agenda. Um, Ms. Dixon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, with respect to items number two and three, we'll take them up individually, but they sort of correspond with one another. So uh, for introduction purposes, what we've done is prepared for the commission's consideration two orders certifying the annual financial and management fuel audits of Mississippi Power Company and Entergy. Uh, to the legislature in accordance with the provisions of Mississippi Code Annotated Section 77342. The reports were filed by the auditors in December and have been reviewed by the staff. Staff submitted a written summary and comments concerning the reports on Friday, um, and Ms. Kruger is available today to, to address those if the commissioners have any questions. Um, in addition, we have representatives from each of the auditing firms here today to present the commission with a brief summary of their respective findings and recommendations. Specifically, we have representatives from Forvis and Bates White uh, to present their findings concerning Mississippi Power Company, and we have representatives of Horn and uh, London Economics to present findings concerning um, Entergy Mississippi. As a reminder and for procedural clarification, today's presentations and proposed orders are the first of what is really a two-step process concerning the fuel audits. At this point, the Commission is merely tasked by the statute with confirming that the audits were done and completed in accordance with the provisions of the statute um, and certifying as much to the, to the legislature. Going forward, Commission staff will meet internally with the public utility staff as well as um, each of the companies uh, to carefully review the substance of the auditor's recommendations. And we will then prepare separate orders um, proposed orders setting forth which recommendations should be implemented via action plans um, or deferred to future audit periods. So with that introduction, um, first on the agenda is Entergy Mississippi, and we have representative, we have Joe Green from Horn, 
um, and Marie Fagan from LEI here to present their respective findings. So we'll start with Mr. Green on the financial portion of the audit. Mr. Green, you're recognized. Thanks, Commissioners. Um, it's a pleasure to be here, and we certainly appreciate the opportunity to serve in this role. Uh, again, my name is Joe Green. I'm a partner at Horn. With me in attendance today is Randa Craig. She is a senior manager from our Gulfport office and also served on this engagement. Procedures were performed to meet the requirements uh, under Mississippi Code Annotated 77-3-42, uh, which states, uh, which directs the commission to cause continuous monitoring, uh, in this case of energies, allowable uh, fuel and purchased energy cost uh, through an audit conducted, conducted in accordance with uh, audited standards accept, uh, generally accepted in, in the U.S. We issued a report dated December 15, uh, 2023, which covered the period of October 1st, 2022 through September 30th, 2023. There were no findings uh, except those payroll and maintenance costs that have, have been historically excluded by the staff, which totaled 98647 or less than 0.5% of net allowable cost. The engagement uh, began in July with planning and risk assessment procedures performed. We made initial data requests and performed transaction testing for the first, first nine month period and then completed the last three months uh, of procedures in October and November. Again, our, the, our focus was the financial audit, um, uh, which which really, if you think about it, is really focused on tr at transaction level testing. It's, um, there's not a lot of judgment. It's either allowable or not allowable. Uh, and so that's, you know, we set uh, audit steps in place to determine if they're allowable or not. Um, testing also included review of contracts in place at the time. Uh, if you think about the sample selection that we in the in the transactions we tested, the majority of those were related to natural gas and purchase power through MISO. In addition, we selected customer transactions to ensure the rate for the customer bill agreed to the CR rate filed with the Mississippi Public Service Commission for the time period of the bill. And finally, I would uh, just note that we did not uh, or would we noted no unresolved disagreements with energy uh, management as a part of this engagement. And I'd certainly be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. Any questions, Jim? Thank, Thank you for you. your presentation. And next we have Marie Fagan with um, London Economics who performed the management portion of the audit for Entergy. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners. Thank you. My name is Marie Fagan. I'm okay. Chief Economist with London Economics International, based in Boston. And we performed the management performance audit for Entergy of, of Entergy Mississippi. So first, I want to thank the folks at Entergy for their cooperation during the audit. And overall, as in previous years, London Economics found that the processes, procedures, and oversight at Entergy and EMI were thorough and professional, as you would expect from a large and established organization. We had a handful of follow-ups from the 11 recommendations that were identified in the previous audit that the commission determined that no action was warranted at that time, but that the auditor should monitor these going forward for the current audit. Eight of the 11 were resolved by EML during the current audit period, and the other three we determined still need to be monitored during a future audit period, and I'll identify these. They're covered in our seven recommendations for the current audit period. So to summarize, we examined, as we do in these audits, eight areas of operations and we have seven recommendations from these. So the first area is organization and staffing of the utility. 
we found that Entergy Mississippi and Entergy Services appear to be well organized with clearly documented policies and procedures in place. We have one recommendation. With respect to plans for decommissioning the independent station coal plant, Entergy's efforts during the current audit period were still preliminary. So this is one of the three issues identified in the previous audit, which still needs to be monitored going forward. Uh, the second area is plant operations. We found that EML's power generation group was well organized and adequately staffed, and that procedures were well documented. However, we did observe some plant operations which warrant further review, and we have two recommendations there. For underperforming units, Entergy should seek to bring performance closer to industry averages for availability and for forced outages if it is cost effective to do so. Secondly, we recommend that EML review the budgeted capital spending, CapEx amount, for the Sunflower facility in the next audit period to improve the accuracy of its capital budgeting. Third is MISO operations. And overall, we found that Entergy has clear processes in place to ensure the company's effective and competent participation in the MISO markets. We have two recommendations. MISO is proposing a new methodology for uh, developing its demand curves in its capacity resource auction, and Entergy has proposed an opt-out mechanism, the status which wasn't uh, finalized during the time we did the audit, so we recommend it should be monitored by the next auditor. Uh, the second recommendation under MISO operations was that the commitment strategy for the independence units for part of the audit period was unusual. Partly this was in response to shortages of coal transportation services. So something that affected the whole industry and not just the company. Uh, but our analysis indicated that their commitment strategy probably did not incur unreasonable costs to customers. Uh, but we do recommend that Entergy review its commitment strategies for independence. And this is one of the three open issues from the last audit to be continued to be monitored. monitored. In the category, fourth category of coal procurement, we found that coal contracts reflected market awareness and prudency. However, as in the past, coal burn forecasts remain significantly different from actual coal burns. So we continue to recommend that Entergy identify the major drivers the coal burn forecast errors and implement an action plan to improve forecasting accuracy. Forecasting accuracy is important for long-term resource planning and to prevent excessive inventories. A related topic is coal inventory management. And during the audit period, coal inventory management required at times, as I mentioned uh, previously, operating the independence plant to manage inventories. So this isn't ideal. The, the coal inventory should support optimal plant operations and not the other way around. But some of this was owing to pressures on coal supplies that the company, it was out of the company's control. Uh, but we... Okay, are we, am I back? Yeah, you're back. Sorry about that. Yeah, you can proceed. Um, That'll wake them up. Yeah, everybody's <laughs> awake now, right? Uh, uh, so this is the third issue that still needs to be monitored going forward, the coal inventory management. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, that was coal procurement. Um, we, we believe the inventory management could be improved by more accurate forecasts of coal burns. Uh, category six is natural gas supply and transportation, and we found that EML and Entergy has a reasonable procurement strategy for natural gas, 
and delivered gas prices were competitive when we compared them to spot market prices. And during the audit period, Entergy implemented or began implementing our recommendations from the last audit. Uh, it began utilizing a capacity release program, which helps monetize the value of unused firm transmission capacity on gas pipelines to the benefit of customers. And they implemented some strategies to improve their gas price forecasting. And they began a pilot program to uh, look at new ways of hedging gas prices. So we recognize these efforts to improve the gas procurement activities. And we have one recommendation, which is to perform an analysis of the hedging program that was conducted in 2023 to evaluate the impact to customers in terms of cost versus the current strategy. The seventh area is nuclear fuel procurement and nuclear fuel inventory management, which we found uh, a process which was well organized and showed market awareness and implemented savvy approaches to contracting. So we had no recommendations there. And finally, the eighth category is the Grand Gulf Power Purchase Agreement. And uh, it, Entergy addressed the causes of the forced outages in, that we found in the previous audit period, which had reduced capacity factors and increased cost to customers. But this has been addressed. The plant uh, had far fewer forced outages uh, as, and is improving its performance substantially. So we had no recommendations there. So that's the highlights from our audit. I'm happy to answer any questions. I have a colleague with me, Barbara Porto, who's instrumental on these audits. So uh, we hope we can answer any detailed questions you might have. Sounds great. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, questions, gentlemen? Yep, you recognize Commissioner Stamps. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, could you leave a copy of your uh, audit with staff? Yes, sir. Thank you. Any more questions? Yeah. What's your participation on gas prices in the future? Do you have that? <laughs> Probably higher than what they are right now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Any more questions? Thank you for your presentation. Thank you, Mr. Thanks. Chairman, Commissioners. Ms. Dixon, does that complete your um, item number? That completes two? item number two, yes, okay. Mr. Chairman. Um, hearing no questions, uh, do I have a motion? Oh, Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Ms. Dixon, you are recognized to present item 3, 2022 AD 43. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is the same situation, but with respect to the Mississippi Power Company fuel audit. And so we have uh, Will Crawford from Forbis to present respecting the financial audit. And we have Vincent Musco from Bates White to present regarding the procurement audit or management audit. Mr. Crawford, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair, Commissioners. I uh, appreciate the opportunity to work uh, with Mississippi Power on, on behalf of the Commission of Ratepayers this year. Uh, really, uh, we went into our audit and conducted it uh, as expected and as contracted under generally accepted auditing standards and under the PSC's rules. And I'm pleased to report that we did issue what we would refer to as a clean opinion or an unmodified opinion. That's the highest level of assurance that we as CPAs can provide. It's the type of opinion that you and the ratepayers would want to see. This is our second year working with Mississippi Power uh, on these audits. So we uh, we came in with it being our second year uh, with a heightened sense of professional skepticism, knowing that we had some familiarity there and wanted to make sure that that didn't, that didn't cause any bias, and it did not. We focused our audit in, in what I would call two main areas, looking primarily at non-financial data and how that non-financial data can drive the financial data. Uh, we looked at things such as uh, heating and degree days and cooling days and how the weather can imp impact uh, the results of the fuel clause along with um, uh, commodity prices. If you remember when we, we a new commission this year, but last year we gave this report, uh, the physical year 2022 was very volatile when it came to fuel prices and especially natural gas was incredibly high last year. Those, those prices have somewhat stabilized Along with your along with your question from previously, so um, uh, we use that to to analyze the, the financial data and also set some expectations. From there, we performed uh, substantive testing using three real formats, three real three real ways to test 
uh, the fuel clause, number one, being test of controls, uh, digging into the processes, procedures, checks, and balances to make sure that uh, Mississippi Power's uh, process to accumulate this data and analyze what's allowable under the fuel clause was followed. Then we used that non-financial data to drive predictive analytics and also performed a, a significant number of tests of details where we um, dig into the weeds and draw samples, which I think is, is Mississippi Power's favorite part because they have the full support for all of the hundreds of items that we asked to look at. Um, associated with this audit, we had no adjustments, no recommendations, and no findings, which is what you and the ratepayers and Mississippi Power want to hear. We also issue another document uh, that's a deliverable associated with this engagement referred to as a management letter. We issue that to Mississippi Power, but a copy is provided to the staff to provide to the commission. Uh, and what that letter says is less important than what that letter does not say. If we had had any accounting recommendations or housekeeping matters or items that were deemed to be immaterial that needed to be communicated to management or the commission, those would have been included in that letter. And I'm pleased to report that there were no matters included in that letter. Uh, Mr. Chair, Commissioners, that concludes my prepared remarks. I would love to entertain any questions from the Commission. Gentlemen. Appreciate your presentation. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Crawford. Um, Mr. White? You're recognized. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners. Uh, my name is Vincent Musco. I'm a partner with uh, Bates White Economic Consulting. Uh, Bates White was retained by the Commission to perform a management and procurement review audit of fuel purchases by Mississippi Power Company for the period October 1, 2022 through September 30, 2023. Our audit uh, assessed Mississippi Power's practices, procedures, and processes for effectiveness and economic efficiency. We reviewed Mississippi Power's processes and controls for ensuring the statutory objective of lowest reasonable cost purchases. We reviewed individual fuel and purchase power transactions to ensure Mississippi Power is purchasing fuel in an economic manner. Our audit culminated in a report submitted on December 15, 2023. The report contains our findings, conclusions, and recommendations. We reviewed several aspects of Mississippi Power's operations, including organizations, staffing, and controls, purchase and inventory of management, purchase and inventory management of coal, purchase and supply management of natural gas, power plant performance and fleet operations, and energy trading operations. We identified no major concerns in our audit, though did put forth six recommendations for consideration. For, first, we recommended that if Mississippi Power keeps Plant Daniel Unit 1 available, provide energy or capacity through 2027, that Mississippi Power provide a cost-benefit analysis to the Commission to support that decision. Second, in light of higher, higher forced outage rates and lower availability factors at Plant Ratcliffe, we recommended that Mississippi Power uh, closely monitor that unit's performance in the next audit period. Third, we recommend that Mississippi Power take measures to ensure that performance at plant sweat going forward is consistent with its measured availability factor and to provide the commission with a summary of any measures taken. Fourth, we recommended that Mississippi Power provide its newly developed monthly heat rate monitoring reports to the auditor in future audits. Fifth, we recommend that Mississippi Power track Plant Watson's hourly and incremental average costs together with the associated interchange energy rate and related losses. And sixth, we recommend that the method and procedures used to determine the reserve capacity sharing rate under the intercompany interchange contract be expanded to include alternatives when no conforming offers are received in the annual solicitation for peaking plant equivalent call options. As a final point, we noted that personnel at Mississippi Power and Southern Company Services were responsive and professional throughout the engagement, and our audit team was appreciative of, of their cooperation. And I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Appreciate the presentation. Any questions, commissioners? Thank you. Appreciate your presentation. Ms. Dixon, does that complete item number three? It does, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Thank you.
Um, any uh, hearing no questions? Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Good. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Move on to item number four. Um, Ms. Taylor, you're recognized to present item number four. Great. Thank you all. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioners. Um, this is a complaint that we um, that I'm got before you for your consideration. Um, the complaint is against Piney Woods Country Life School. Uh, these are for ongoing and uh, persistent violations of pipeline safety regulations, some federal, um, all, all federal except for one uh, commission rule, uh, 57, um, that the Pipeline Safety Division has worked to resolve with them, but it has not occurred, and this has been going on since before June 9th of 2023. Where are they um, located? They are located in Rankin County. Rankin County. Okay, thanks. And so um, this will go ahead and... Uh, get the process started for us to um, formally uh, have some in here for a show calls hearing. And then um, this also, so that does two things. This first will be a complaint that we'll file and serve on the respondent, which is Piney Woods School. Um, and then we will, uh, it orders that, that a show calls hearing take place. And then the, I hear the, the, sh hear the matter. Um, so my plan is to hear this within 10 days or so just to go ahead and get this rolling because I think we have good calls for for it to uh, not to wait as long as 30 days or so or whatever, because this is this is a safety matter, and I think we need to get it on the herd and get it get it cleared up and assess some fines if they need to be assessed fines. Commissioner Stamps, it's your district. You have any questions? Um, so when, would you, when are you proposing to have the hearing? I'm going to probably set it for around March 20th, given enough time to get it served, because I'm going to serve it by, I have to serve it on their registered agent. Um, and I'll probably, it'll be by certified mail. So I'll give them a couple days for that. So I'll, I think by March 20th, they'll have enough time to that they get on in here. Okay. We usually give 30 days, but I just think because this is a this has been going on as long as it has, and it's a safety, you know, it really is a safety issue that they need to get this taken care of. So I'm going to bump it up a little okay. bit. In the, in the future, could we just um, brief on this before the meeting? Oh, sure. This, this kind of came up at the end. So uh, it was just one of those decisions that I think that pipeline safety had decided this needs to go ahead and be taken care of. So that's that's how it would be. Sure, absolutely. Thank you. And just for since we're all new, how does that? Do you have the hearing? How do you, how does the hearing proceed, and where do you have it? Yeah, I have it here, right okay. here in this in this room, right here. And they just uh, you know we summon them to come, and then they 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 appear, and they will put on whatever evidence they have to show good cause as to why they should be excused from compliance. And absent a showing of that, they they are assessed whatever fines we think are necessary. Uh, Mr. Chairman, can we do this show calls hearing about 30, give them about 30 days? To Go ahead and give them 30 days? Oh, sure, yes. absolutely, yeah. Thank okay. you very much. Okay, yeah. In, um, okay. Any other questions? And again, as far as this, um, obviously, Commissioner Stamps, it's in it's in this area, so I know he wants to be involved and try to make sure that there, we help the people of the of the area, to, especially with pipeline safety, with what's going on here mm -hmm. recently. So, um, again, just continue to loop Commissioner Stamps in if, at, on every step if you can. Um, any other questions? Do I have a motion? So moved. A second. All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Um, we'll move on to the next agenda item. Um, Mr. Hammonds? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I'm just uh, going to request that we can add uh, docket number 2023 UA 128 Blues Trail Solar Energy LLC to the agenda. So if, if, if we could have a motion to add that to the agenda, I could then take it up. So, yeah. And a motion? So moved. Second. Item added. All right. Uh, so, commissioners, this is just Blues Trail Excuse Solar. Me, All in favor? All in. <laughs> Any opposed? Okay. All right. Thank you. Commissioner, this is Blues Trail Solar Energy LLC. It is a petition for a solar uh, facility in Tunica County. The order before you refers it to Chairman Chris Brown for hearing. And I can answer any questions you'll have. Any questions? I'm sorry. How big is the field? It is, uh, I'm not sure. It is probably between 
80 and 120 megawatts, I would guess, maybe a little bigger. It's it's a it's a utility scale solar facility. Mr. Stamps, just some of the same things that I expressed in the pre docket meeting yesterday. Um, just look at the safeguards of the landowner. Just make sure the landowners understand the full spectrum of what's going on and um, and some potential um, negative eventualities of pursuing this. That's right. Yes. Yeah, so, so we spoke about it yesterday. Just. So these, these solar facilities, any electric generating facility pursuant to state statute requires a hearing mm -hmm. and sort of past commission practice, the purpose of referring these to a hearing examiner is so the hearing can be conducted in the, you know, in the county where so citizens can come, landowners can come, county officials can come. So yeah, that's something we'll work through. Yeah, we'll, we'll actually go to in district and see how it's going to impact and make sure those people understand the, the pros and the cons and possible fallout of any kind of action that we take. You know, Mr. Chairman, one of the things I expressed yesterday in the pre-docket meeting was once we grant this authority, they can go sell the operation and sell it again, but who knows the wherewithal of the next entity that buys it, they don't have to come back before the commission. You know, do they have the appropriate insurance and financial wherewithal to maintain the operation? I just don't want to create future brown brownfields. But I also want to leave it to a landowner to make his own decision. But I want the landowner to be well informed of the decisions that they're making and the potential ramifications thereof. I share that, Mr. Commit uh, Commissioner. I think it's um, it, I own a little property, piece of property that has oil well on it, and so uh, I've owned it for about 15 years. And over the last 15 years, it's changed hands probably five, six times. So each subsequent owner of that small little oil well gets less and less financially stable. Right. So the question is, at the end of the day. If you have towards the end of the life cycle, what do we do with all that infrastructure on that on if it's your land on your land, and uh, who's responsible for cleaning it up once it's at the end of its life cycle? So those are legitimate questions. You know, even if there's a hailstorm that comes around and that fifth land, or that fifth operator now has a may not have had the appropriate insurance in place, and now you have a, a brownfield, and so that's what I'm trying to safeguard against. I agree 100 percent commissioner um any other questions on this item who's the co-op so it is in tunica so this facility would sell into the miso market but it's independently owned right that's correct this is not a utility project can we say who's on the own who wants to open it uh I've, there's the attorney for blues trail of solar is here today i don't i'm not sure who the ultimate parent is, but if, if you wanted to recognize them, they probably know. Yep, you're recognized. Yeah. Mike's up here. Beg your pardon? Okay. Gotcha. Thank you. Inventor. Um, as, as what this allows us to do, again, again to dig deeper and get um, um, input from the community. So, um, commissioners, we'll com come back to you all and report what we find out there before we move any further. Um, any? Commissioner Carr? Where's the closest transmission line? I have, some no, I have no idea. I can find out. And, again, this is just referring it to Chairman Brown for hearing. This is not approving the facility. We'll find that, Commissioner. Um, any other questions? All in. Um, got a motion? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Um, Mr. Hammonds, we'll move on to the next one. Um, uh, order of referral. Oh, yes. Yeah, so we just took that up. So I think that we have two resolutions that y'all are going to present. Go. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Stamps, you're uh, recognized for presenting the first resolution. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this first resolution is a resolution of the Mississippi Public Service Commission in support of the advancement of nuclear energy, whereas the Mississippi Public Service Commission is the state agency responsible okay, is the state agency responsible for the regulation of utilities in the interest of the public, including electric utilities that generate electric power from nuclear power generation plants, and whereas the commission's integrated resource planning and reporting rule IRP applies to jurisdictional investor-owned electric utilities regulated by the Commission in the development and reporting of long-term resource plannings 
plans. Whereas the Commission's IRP analyzes the utility's load requirements while balancing cost, energy, reliability, and efficiency, environmental responsibility, risk mitigation, and reasonably priced service for customers. And whereas nuclear energy is a clean, base load energy source necessary to achieve a reliable, secure, and diversified electric grid, and whereas nuclear energy is the largest source of clean power in the United States, generating nearly 800 billion kilowatt hours of electricity each year and produces more than half of the nation's emissions-free electricity. Whereas the nuclear industry supports nearly half a million jobs in the United States and contributes to an estimated $60 billion to the U.S. gross domestic product each year. Whereas the advancements in nuclear energy technologies, specifically small modular reactors, reactors demonstrate that nuclear energy should be at the forefront of policy decisions in this state and across the country. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Mississippi Public Service Commission express its support of nuclear energy as a clean baseload energy source necessary to achieve a reliable and diversified electric grid. And that's a uh, reading of the resolution. Thank you, Mr. Commissioner. Um, I think we all three agree in that, that uh, the future to clean, reliable energy is nuclear uh, overall. Commissioner Carr, you have any questions, comments? So moved. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Um, the next resolution is in response to the, the, the governor's state of the state address. You know, um, yeah, we're geeks, so we, we watch all that. So <laughs> um, the governor did, did have a good, uh, many good points, but one that kind of stuck out with us is um, the, Governor Reeves called on the legislature to establish and fund a state rail authority. Um, the importance of rail safety has been the subject of national attention and scrutiny due to the recent devastating derailment in East, East Palestine, Ohio. The Mississippi Public Service Commission was initially created as the Mississippi Com Railroad Commission, so that's your daily history fact. So um, we were originally established as the Mississippi Railroad Commission in March 11, 1884. So this commission was originally tasked with uh, rail, uh, overseeing railroads. Um, the Mississippi Public, Commission, Public Service Commission realizes that appropriate stewardship of Mississippi's railway, railways is a vital for both safety and economic development purposes. To that end, the Mississippi Public Service Commission expresses its support of a state rail authority and desire um, that that said authority be vested in this commission. So again, we're, we're ready to help Governor Reeves and uh, the state kind of oversee some of this. It's kind of where we started. So as us three as commissioners are willing to take that baton again and try to make sure that we uh, represent the people of Mississippi. Any questions? So moved, Chair. I have a second? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Any, any other items that we need to take up? Mr. Chairman, I, I recognize that today is a special day for two wonderful individuals. First and foremost, Ms. Susan Watkins in my office. Today is her birthday. Happy 26th birthday, Susan. Happy Everybody 26th. <laughs> and I also want to recognize that today is uh, the Chairman's birthday as well. Happy birthday, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. And, and I'm 27, Ms. Susan. <laughs> Got you by one year. Um, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Com thank you, Commissioner Stamps. Um, any other business in front of the commission? With that, uh, we stand adjourned. Thank you all for coming. <laughs>